the night, and we're on our last interview today. Those of you just joining us, we spend 15 minutes lightning fast. It's like an audio version of a monthly income report from the world's top entrepreneurs. So we've got a great guest coming up. Those of you that are just passing through for South by, just come in and drink all the alcohol. Just come on in. That's how it works. So this guy's special. This will be one of the, I, I believe, business model, a SaaS business model, but he founded the business several years ago, okay? And really what his focus has been on is he's used things like TechCrunch Disrupt, One Disrupt, just recently raised $1.5 million, which we'll get into in a second. His company is called BitFusion. Please help me in welcoming Subu Rama to the stage. Come on up, man. Hey, thank you. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah. Grab the mic. Grab the mic. Make yourself comfortable. All right. All right. All right. So let's talk about Good this. To be so, here. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, All right, so first off, tell me first, tell everyone, what does Bitfusion do? Um, so basically what we do is we basically make a bunch of commodity servers make it look like a supercomputer. So it's kind of like, you know, imagine you basically have a lot of cell phones here. Let's say your cell phone is slow. How do you actually combine all the resources in multiple cell phones and make your cell phone faster? We do that for our data center. So you steal other people's processing power and put it on your clients to make them faster, Yes, right? and we do the same <laughs> for enterprises, right? So there's a lot of idle compute that actually happens in a data center. There's a lot of unused resources. We basically pool all the unused resources and make a single instance really fast and as powerful as a supercomputer. Okay. The reason we actually do that is because we think high-performance computing is something that's not just reserved for big companies. It should be for everybody, for the normals. Are you familiar with Mohit from Cohesion and how they're working on hyperconvergence? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Yes. Uh, I, uh, the, is, that, is that the hyperconvergence Yeah, hyperconvergence. Framework? Yeah, they, they just raised $100 million. Folks, if you want to listen to that episode, it's episode 135. NathanLocker.com forward slash the top 135. Guys like this, redoing the entire industry. How old is the business? What year did you find it uh, in? So our business is basically a year old. Uh, we started the company in uh, 2015, January. Uh, we're all ex-Intel, you know, ex-Dell, you know, ex-Samsung people who started the company. Uh, so yeah, so, you know, we're about nine people. Uh, we're actually just right around the corner. Our office is 412 Congress. Oh, so you're, you're based in Austin. You're an Austin company, yes. Oh, very cool, very yeah. cool. So when did you decide to leave Dell or Intel or the corporate world and launch the business? And, and if you don't mind sharing, actually yeah. share it because I'm going to make you share it. I'm just kidding. How much money were you making? What salary did you give up to start the business? Yeah, I mean, actually, you know, so everybody in our industry basically you know, generally makes about uh, close to a quarter million dollars a year. Uh, How much? You know, quarter, quarter of a million? million? Yeah, 250,000. Yeah, yeah. So, so the reason we actually, so I spent about six months, at, in, six years at Intel. You know, building, you know, essentially high performance systems. And then I spent a time at Dell uh, building cloud infrastructures. Right around 2014, we saw this big trend where the world is moving more heterogeneous beyond CPUs. Data centers are becoming more complex. Data is exploding. Computations become interesting. And we saw this trend where only big companies can actually take advantage of, you know, uh, high performance computing. So we saw an opportunity where how do we bring that to the normals? Bring, because every innovation has actually been not just done by the big companies. Actually, innovation comes from the makers. Yep. So we want to do that. So we thought the time was right, and uh, we quit our jobs. You know, my other co-founders, uh, two of them, uh, they so were working. Three, at, three founders total. Three founders. Okay. Uh, the other two guys, one guy was working at Samsung, one guy was working at Intel. We basically, essentially, you know, I, I actually pinged one of my uh, one of my co-founders at Samsung. We actually met for a uh, lunch at Korea House. And then we say, hey, let's actually do this, uh, do something like this in this area. And then we pinged another guy that we knew. We met in Mozart's, and pretty much in a week, we said, what? We should probably now do this thing. And in about like three, four months, we were out. We were out. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. So you raised, well, first off, how do you have the equity conversation? Three co-founders, who has what equity? How'd you do that? Uh, we did it equally. Because I you did 33, 33. Come yeah. on, that's like the lazy way to do it. No, uh, we actually did that actually because, you know, if you think about it, right, that, I think that's the right way to do it. Uh -huh. The reason is, uh, you don't want one person to feel that, you know, uh, that person's putting more work but like getting less equity and so on. So we find sometimes, right, so sometimes I might work more, sometimes I might work less. My other co-founders will work more. So mm -hmm. if you make it equal, everything becomes very simple. But doesn't that like, so like it's kind of like those founders who split it like 50-50 and you always wonder like, well, do they have the tough conversation about are they actually both going to put in the same amount of energy and the same amount of work? And basically what you're saying is you just trust each other enough you're all going to put in the same energy and work. And, and, you're, and, and in fact, to be honest, people don't put the, uh, the same amount of energy all the time, right? For example, uh, there, are, there, are, there are times that I may not actually work as hard as I should, but my co-founders will be working hard. Yeah. And there are times, like, for example, one of my co-founders, he just had a baby uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, he may not be able to you know, work that hard for a couple of weeks. But, you know, it's, I mean, in the end, it all evens out, right? Yep. I mean, a percentage here and there, 5%, 10%, doesn't really matter. If you're trying to build a $100, billion, $100 million company, 
a million doesn't matter. dollars doesn't matter. Yep. So did you just for clarity purposes, those folks in the audience looking to launch their own company, did you put your guys you know, the founder shares on a vesting schedule? If so, how long and what was the cliff? Uh, I cannot share that okay. details yet because you know uh, that, that's a little you know uh, you know uh, that's something that I cannot share. At this what moment. would you recommend? So okay, I would recommend whatever. Uh, everybody is comfortable with, right? <laughs> Don't just do something <laughs> just because the VCs say to do that. Do no, so. no, before you raise capital, when you guys as entrepreneurs sound, sign the founders agreements, whether we actually, in fact, when we initially signed the founders agreement before we raised equity, uh, we didn't have any vesting schedule. Okay, so no vesting, everyone's fully vested. Yep. No cliff, okay, great. Yep. So let's just fast forward and, to- and, and plus the reason is because, right, I mean, I've, I've known these guys for the last, you know, uh, eight years. Got it. Right, I mean, when you know these people, you know, I mean, you trust each other, right? I mean, like, these are guys that basically you know, sit and have beer with. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It makes good sense. So let's fast forward to the investing. You had three folks initially in the, in the business. Uh -huh. um, you decide to raise capital. Was it a seed round? How much did you raise? So we raised, uh, we raised about $1.5 million. You know, uh, we actually raised uh, uh, last year around you know, end of April is when we raised. Uh, we went through Techstars, which is an incubator. Yep. Uh, so we went through that and right after demo day, actually that fundraising was the most easiest thing. I never thought it would be that easy. To raise the you, capital? Yeah, we, we basically opened a round uh, around the first week of April. We were done in two weeks. So just so everyone listening understands that, he opens the round, meaning you, you put the call out for capital. Did you have, was it a C, was it a, was it a debt round or was it an equity round? Uh, it was a debt round. It okay, convertible a, note. Yep. Uh, so typical seed round. Typical what seed round, what, right. What were some of the, the critical terms on that? I mean, so did you, did you have a cap rate that you optimized for? Uh, we did have a cap, uh, cap rate. Uh, the way we actually raised money was we used this thing called SAFE. Uh, uh, it yeah. is, uh, it's YC, YC yeah. kind of standard document. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right. So this is actually very simple. It's not even a convertible note. Uh, it's, 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 it's the most straightforward uh, document. And no investors had any questions. We just used that. We just went online, downloaded what Paul Graham had, printed it, didn't, you know, didn't have to spend any big money on lawyers. We just used it. So Sabu, I have a big question. I might, I might go like ape shit crazy depending yes. on how you answer this. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, uh, so many people right now, especially in the Valley, are raising so much money and they go on TechCrunch, they get this big article, raise 200 million, and they have like no revenue. My opinion, like not relaunch, you have to be able to sell to build a business. So have you guys made sales? And if so, how are you making money? Yeah, so uh, in fact, you know, we, so, so our company is basically, it was a very hard technology to build, right? Mm -hmm. So we spent about nine months last year building our technology. It is a very hard technology to replicate. We have about, you know, uh, you know eight uh, patents that we have. So we released a product at Supercomputing, which actually happens in Austin in November. Since we've released the product in just like you know uh, three months, we basically have what half a dozen customers. Okay. Uh, customers range from you know uh, cloud service providers uh, all the way up to like oil and gas companies like Shell. Okay. So this must be an is this an enterprise? Would you categorize this as an enterprise SaaS company? Yes. Ours is an enterprise SaaS company. Okay. So what does the average enterprise pay you on an annual basis? So it it actually varies. Okay. Uh, depending on the length of the contract. So we basically have actually things which pay ten thousand dollars a year. Okay all the way up to $100,000 a year. Okay, so 10 to 100,000 and let's say let's say it averages somewhere around 50ish thousand. Yeah. What does it cost you to acquire that enterprise customer? Uh, so we actually did this a uh, little strategically. So what we did was look, a traditional enterprise sales sometimes takes 6 to 9 months. Uh -huh. So what we did was, we you know, since we just launched our product, we want enough credibility in the market. We said, let's actually find customers who we can close in a month to three months. Okay. So we then actually worked backwards and said, let's actually create a customer persona which maps that. And then we went after that. So did you hit that sales cycle yes. three months? Actually, we actually hit that sales cycle in a month. Wow. So we basically like, literally in a couple of months, we basically have six guys, you know, uh, you know essentially we actually are you know, doing pilots with six guys and we have two contracts signed. Wow. So you've been doing this a year. How much total revenue has the business done? Uh, so I, uh, unfortunately I can't share that. Give me a range. Less than a million dollars. Less than a million dollars. Okay, more than five hundred thousand. Less than five hundred thousand dollars. More than a hundred thousand. Uh, I can't. I can't disclose that. Around a hundred thousand. Uh, it's actually. It, it, you know, it's, it's more than that, right? But I can't disclose the details. Do you, you've raised one point four million? How many team members do you currently have? Uh, we have nine people. Uh, okay. It's a completely engineering team. Okay. Uh, it's it's literally uh, yeah. And so with with nine-ish people, on, does that include the three co-founders? Yes. Okay. So with nine people on the engineering team, sales you're still catching up, right? With enterprise sales, how much cash are you guys burning per month after all expenses? Uh, again, unfortunately, I, I cannot I cannot I cannot share that detail as well because there's actually a financials, uh -huh. but uh, we you know we basically you know uh, 
pays all of market rate uh, mm -hmm. to the engineers, so you can probably not make the guess. Well, help, help, I guess help us understand what Less than 100K. Our, our burn rate is less than 100K. It's, so you're losing less than 100K cash per month. Yes. And are all your engineers based here in Austin, or are they remote? Uh, we have about six people in Austin, and we have the rest in Europe. So you've been awesome with numbers. This is great. People are learning a ton, trust me. Before we get to my favorite part of the show, tell me what 2016 looks like. I mean, so, what's the plan? So the 2016 looks great. Uh, we are basically, our plan is to basically get as many enterprise customers as possible in the CSPs, ISPs, and SIs. Uh, I'm going to be making. What, are the, what do those things mean that you just said? Um, CSPs are cloud service providers, SIs are system integrators, and ISPs are independent software vendors. And uh, our plan is to basically, uh, by you know, by end of the year, uh -huh. uh, we are essentially you know, are shooting uh, to essentially have enough customers so that next year. Series actually, A. Huh? Series A. You know, we might actually do a Series A even before that, actually, because mm -hmm. you know, we already have investors already talking to us. How do you think about when to do a Series A? Are you saying, I'm going to wait till I get the valuation I want or the right strategic investors? So it's always the right strategic investors, right? I'm a big believer of we don't believe in valuations because valuations are, you know, I mean, it, like Dropbox raised at, uh, I think, a $2 million valuation for the Series A. Yep. I mean, look at Dropbox, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it might go IPO right well, now. Well, then he goes IPO with like... 2%, but it's a really big pie. It's a big number, right? It's a so big pie. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Sequoia came in and basically $2 million cap. So, or $2.5 million cap. So, I don't really believe in valuations that much. It's all about the right strategic investor. So, for example, right now we have a, I mean, our seed investor, one of our seed investors is an investor called Data Collective. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a VC fund uh, in Silicon Valley. Okay. Our they came in though on the safe, right? Yeah, they came okay, in on yeah. the safe, right? So these, like, and, and we have another fund you know, in Texas. All these guys are helping us so much. So we actually want investors who are helps us not just in ups but also in the downs of the company yep. because you also we always are ups and downs. Yep, yep. So I'm Graham Weston, you know, on the board of Rackspace. I see this technology. I love it like crazy. I'm going Sabu. I'm writing a ten million dollar check right now. Do you sell the company to Rackspace for ten million dollars? No. Twenty? No. Because come we, on. We have, we have already made. Okay, in fact, okay. So it is you know, So we are here to basically build a business. Okay, because the reason we left our companies to actually start this company, because we see a huge value in this. Mm -hmm. What we are doing essentially is, what people did in software-defined networking and software-defined storage, we are trying to do the same for software-defined compute. We think this could be as big as VMware if we execute it right in the next few years. What's VMware's most recent valuation? VMware is a public company. What was our market cap? Probably over 100 billion. Big, does that turn you yeah. on, 100 billion? Uh, I mean, actually, VMware, VMware is actually- You just not... ignored my question. What was that? Did that turn you on, 100 billion? I mean, of course, right? That's <laughs> what you want to build, right? Good, that's the right answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very good. All right, but hey, before we get to my favorite part of the show, Sabu, if people want to connect with you personally online, where can they do that? Uh, the best way to connect me is Twitter, uh, Subu Rama, S U B B U R A M A. That's my Twitter handle. Awesome. Well, Top Tribe, there you have it. All right, no pressure. This, these are actually get easier. This has been pretty tough, but you've been great. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Before, do you know what time it is? Uh, yeah, it's uh, five uh, thirty-five, five forty. No. <laughs> I thought you were gonna. You were close. It's time for the famous five. All right. So number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, my favorite business book is uh, Steve Jobs' uh, biography. Number two, is there a CEO that you're following or studying right now? So, I, so I'm a big fan of Jobs. So I actually follow him a lot. He's not alive, but I still <laughs> follow him a lot. <laughs> so I was wondering. So you just study other books, YouTube, so, old YouTube videos. Yeah. So that, that's one guy. I, you know, that's one person I like. Uh, another person I like is Michael Dell. Yeah. Uh, how Michael Dell managed to basically take the company private, and how he managed to go and buy a, a company which is three times as big as his company. Right. Yeah. So I mean, so I, I mean, I, I I'm a big fan of Michael. Well, Top Chop, you want to stay tuned to the top because we will actually have Michael Dell coming on the show in the very near future. It's going to be a great episode. Question number four or number three for you: Is there a favorite online tool you have, like Evernote? Yeah. Uh, so one of my favorite online tools is Slack. Slack. We use Slack. So this is like eating everything. Yeah. I mean, it's like, killing email. It's killing everything. Exactly. Unbelievable. Number four: As you're building this empire, yes or no? Are you getting eight hours of sleep every night? Yes, I actually sleep for eight hours, whatever happens. Uh, what, no matter what? No matter what. Married, kids, single? I'm single. Single. Okay, how old are you? Uh, I'm 33. Okay, take us, what's your social security number? Uh, I'm not going to say Take us back 13 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Uh, so, okay, so, I, so I, I, I'm an immigrant to this country. So 20 years ago, or 15, 13 years ago, I came to this country to study. 
So I, so I'm, I basically came from India, not knowing much. I fell in love with this country because this country is a land of opportunities. That's that's what you wish. It, so wrap that back up for me. You wish you came here faster, or what do you wish you knew when you were twenty? Uh, I wish I started a company when I was twenty. When you were early, uh, and how how old were you when you started? Uh, Big Fusion. So thirty one. Yeah, thirty. Yeah, thirty two. Very good. Well, top for you are an amazing sport, unbelievable sport. So top tribe, there you have it. Launched the business a year ago. One TechCrunch disrupt. Nine people on his team. Already 1.4 million raised. Ideally, building a big, big company like yes, we're going after a very technical space. Sabu, thank you for taking us to the top. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Thank you. You are great. Thanks, man. Thank you. That was yeah, really, really so great. great. Go on over here. Appreciate it, ma'am. Well, hey guys, there you have it. People are listening to the show. They're going, Nathan, you got to do this thing live. So I said, we're going to do it live. They're hard hitting. They're fast. We have great sports like that. Sometimes they crash and burn. You guys have heard them. Sometimes they just can't handle it. Ty Lopez, episode 129. This guy, I got to tell you what, he couldn't handle it. He doesn't own the Lamborghini. Go listen to the episode. Thanks for tuning in.